Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hi, you're very welcome. This is Reading the Past and I'm Dr Cat. This video is going to be a little bit of a departure from my regular content because today I want to talk about methodology. How we should go about reading the past. In particular, what standards, if any, we should be imposing upon ourselves as we do so. I've been on YouTube for just over a year now and I've had a wonderful time. For all of you that are subscribed, watching and liking my videos, and particularly for those of you that are commenting on them, thank you so much. For the most part, my comment section is a really wonderful place that's full of insightful and supportive people. And for that, I am truly grateful. Please don't stop. On one of my videos about the Voynich manuscript mystery, which I'm going to link in a card up here, a couple of you came over with links to other resources, people who were making claims to have solved the mystery, one of which I was familiar with and one of which I hadn't seen yet. But I went away and looked at them. And then I came back and said, well, these look really interesting. However, I'm going to reserve judgment and reserve saying that the mystery has been solved until they have undergone peer review. And I am concerned that perhaps this may unintentionally have come across as me trying to shut down discussion. And that's absolutely not my intention. By setting the standard that something needs to be peer reviewed before I am comfortable with saying that they have the right answer, that is not me saying that something that hasn't been peer reviewed is wrong. It's simply saying that I am waiting, reserving judgment until that peer review has come out. And so I think it's appropriate for me to sit down today and talk about what peer review is, how it functions, why it's valuable, but also where its failings are. Peer review is of course not perfect, nothing is, but it is an academic standard. It is a level of academic rigour that I am comfortable with. And it is my intention with this channel to maintain as far as possible that academic rigour, because I think the past deserves it, but I also think that you as viewers deserve it. With that being said, let's look at peer review. The stated principal function of peer review is that it allows a publisher to know whether a book, book chapter or article is suitable for publication. The expectation is that peer review will involve your work being looked at by one or a number of people who are also experts in your chosen field. However, peer review itself can take many forms and of those many forms, different values are attached to them. Some are seen as more worthy forms of peer review than others. Perhaps the most questionable form of this kind of peer reviewing is the post-publication review, essentially a comment section where people can respond to what you've said. And while this certainly is interesting in terms of dialogue, what it doesn't allow is the person who is the original author to alter their article necessarily. Or if it does, then it means that comments that have been made then make little sense. So that is potentially a more questionable form of peer review. Next up is open peer review, which I think is less problematic for me than post-publication review, but still has issues within it. Within open peer review, the reviewer or reviewers is known to the author and the author is known to the reviewer. This is not an anonymous process. And considering the tiny world that some academic disciplines are, you may personally know the person that you are reviewing and similarly the people that are reviewing you. I think that this potentially prevents people from speaking as freely as they would about the work in question, or perhaps even more problematically, speaking more freely and being more critical than they normally would because of their own personal peccadilloes. Next up, there is the single blind peer review. This is where the author does not know who is reviewing them, but the reviewer or reviewers know the name of the person they are reviewing. So potentially similar problems emerging. If you know who you're reviewing and you happen to like them or dislike them as a person, if they are a professional colleague or even rival, might this alter your opinion of their work? May you be kinder or harsher than you would have been otherwise? Lastly, there is what is known as being the gold standard in peer review. This is the double blind peer review where both groups of people are anonymous. The author does not know the names of the people who are reviewing them and similarly the reviewers do not know the name of the person that they are reviewing. 
So some of those problems may be mitigated, although I would say perhaps not entirely, and I will get onto that later. What value does peer review, in whatever form it may take, actually add to academia and academic publication, above and beyond letting a publisher know whether something is suitable for publication, of course. As I mentioned earlier, the expectation is that the person or people peer reviewing you will be experts in your chosen field. Through their expertise, they will be able to give advice and suggestions to not only the publisher, but also the author of the academic article to improve their scholarship, their writing style, and a number of other things. Essentially, the peer review should be a helpful process, not just for the publisher, but for the author. And therefore, it should ensure that a higher quality product comes to the academic market, that you, as a reader of an academic text, know that it has been through a system whereby it has been honed and perfected. But what are the expert academic peer reviewers actually looking for? Well, here's a list. They may be looking at your methodology to assess whether you have approached the topic with the rigour that they deem to be appropriate. Similarly, they're going to look at the findings coming out of that methodology to see whether they are possible, plausible or probable. They are going to be looking to ensure that the article or book or book chapter that you have put forward for peer review is contributing to the academic field in an original way. They, in the worst case scenario, will be rooting out cases of plagiarism. Peer review does not necessarily result in a yes or no answer. It may, and in fact often does, result in suggested corrections to improve the work for publication. They may suggest alterations to writing style, corrections of spelling, punctuation or grammar. They might suggest additional sources, perspectives or interpretations. It also allows both the author and the publisher to ensure that whatever arguments and findings are being presented are being clearly expressed. Therefore, perhaps we should remember that peer review is also an editing process where things like spelling, punctuation and grammar, but also clarity, sense and perspicacity are being checked. Additionally, for the author who submits their work to this process, they, if successful, are given backing and credibility for their findings. When we hear that something is in a peer-reviewed publication, we know that it has gone through this process in some way or another. Therefore, the findings presented are given more value than they would be otherwise. Of course, something being peer-reviewed doesn't mean that it is any more truthful or factual. It simply means that the truth or fact or otherwise has been assessed by outside parties. Indeed, perhaps truth and fact are the wrong terms to use. When something has been through peer review and has been successfully published at the end of it, perhaps what we should say is that this is now the temporarily valid understanding based upon the available evidence and sources that we have. This brings me on, I think, quite nicely to the problems or pitfalls of peer review. First and foremost, the fact that so many different things can be known as peer review, that it can occur in so many different formats, I think is probably an issue. If we hear something has been peer reviewed, are we going to assume that that refers to a post-publication review or to the more, as it's called, gold standard, double blind peer review? Does it matter? Would you like to know before reading an article just what format that peer review took? Would it mean that you valued it differently? Let me know in the comments section down below. However, even the so-called gold standard of double blind is not without its problems. And that comes down to human error or human frailty. Within academic disciplines and particularly academic expertise, it's a very small world. You are going to know most of the people who are working on the same stuff as you. And if they are high profile enough to be asked to undertake peer review of somebody else's work, you are almost certainly going to know them. Perhaps you've already reached out to them at a conference or over email or even within your own department. So when your article or manuscript drops on their mat or into their inbox, they're going to know who wrote it because you've already talked to them about it. It's also worth remembering that academia is an incredibly competitive world. Colleagues and rivals can be one and the same, whether at your own institution or elsewhere. If you share expertise and specialisms, you are perhaps going to be working on very similar things. And with the Research Excellence Framework in place, the REF, 
which essentially attributes value to academics for their department based on the amount of publications they have put out, is it possible, even subconsciously, that you may attempt to scupper somebody else's article so that your own on a similar topic might take prominence, therefore making you more valuable to your institution and have a greater potential for promotion and preferment? You might not even intend to do it, but human beings in many cases are wired in quite similar ways and they want to achieve for themselves. It's worth mentioning that some people question just why it is that peer reviewing doesn't come with any training. That you can be approached because of your position as an academic, somebody who is used to researching, synthesising and presenting information, certainly, and be asked to peer review. But just because you can do one thing, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're great at the other thing. And if you're not a great peer reviewer, how helpful are you going to be to either a publisher or to the author of the work you are reviewing? Without training, there is no standardisation. And without standardisation, I do sometimes wonder how helpful the process can be. Finally, we have to question whether the peer review process itself is dangerous for innovation. If you have an individual or a group of individuals who are assessing something for its academic rigour, it is plausible that something that is truly innovative may not pass muster that there may be email inboxes and manila envelopes full of articles that were not given assent simply because of their innovative qualities. And if that's the case, that's truly worrying for the future of academia. Peer review is an opinion, and opinions aren't facts. And so while peer review might be the standard of academic rigour, it isn't perfect, and I am aware of that. Nevertheless, I do believe it's the best that we have at the moment. But I'd love to know what you think of this topic. Was peer review something that you were familiar with before I made this video? How valuable a thing do you think it is? Let me know in the comments section down below or come and find me over on my social media. I'll leave the links in the description box so you can follow me there and we can continue this conversation. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then let me know by hitting the thumbs up. Please also subscribe to this channel and click the bell icon so that YouTube tells you when I've next uploaded. I hope you're going to have a great day, whatever you're doing, and I look forward to speaking to you in my next video. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye for now.